the core of Snap's gameplay, if you haven't seen it before, is super straightforward. Every gain is uh, six turns. He holds up three fingers. Uh, six turns. There are three location tiles in the center of the screen that flip up over the course of the three turns that impact the game with different effects. And the goal is to have the most power at two of the three locations at the end of the game. This deck that I'm actually playing, as you can see here from the deck underneath me, is not playing any one mana cards. So we're always just passing on the first turn of the game. Every card has a mana cost top left, a power it adds top right, and then an effect that it reads underneath typically. The effect of one of my two drops, you notice there's only two two drops in this deck, but Domino, one of my two two drops says we always draw her on turn two. Why are there two electrodes? Because one is an alternate art. They've been leaning into cosmetics heavily for monetization. So we always, always draw Domino on turn two and not before. So we'll drop here over here on the left because Clint says you can't play cards here after turn four. This says six cost cards, cost one less. So I only have one three drop here. And Cosmo has an effect that says on reveal abilities won't happen at the given location. I think I want to play Cosmo left so we can try and win this position since so they have nothing deployed here currently. Yeah, I've been testing out Domino. I think I like her. She lets the top of my curve be a little chunkier. So who had priority here ended up mattering on the left side. So something that... Um, Cosmo, or something that's to note here is you'll note my opponent has glowing text here over their name. That means that they currently have priority, so their cards will flip up first. And who has priority is determined by who's currently winning on board. So they're currently winning two of the three locations, so they're ahead. Uh, the locations in the center are chosen at random from a pool of about 60 currently. I'm going to go ahead and wave here on the left, I think. Okay, so we're solidly losing Clen. Wave is a neat disruptive... Um, Wave's a neat disruptive slash ramp card. I really like her design. Hey, what's going on, Mogwai? So she makes everything in both players' hands cost four until uh, on the next turn. So she can get you to like your six drops, or your five drops that occur, but she also slows down people playing multiple cheap things. Vision's ability says he can move once per turn. So I think we're going to go ahead and slide him out because we might cheat move Vision over here to the left so we can win this location despite things not being able to be played here anymore. So they're only going to be able to play one card here. Okay, so they slid a two over to the left with Heimdall. So if I, if I move Vision here, we tie on the left, which means it would go down to a tiebreaker of which is who has the most total power in play. So I, th I think if we tie here and we drop Magneto Center, we're in a pretty good spot to win the win the tiebreaker. Well, they'll, they'll win right and we'll win center. So I'm gonna, well, I think we'll do that and stay in. Yeah, Ma Magneto is one of my favorite cards. He's super strong. And he is normally a six drop, but we have the Titan location up. Oh, and we actually, this is a full draw, right? Because we're 13 and then we're eight to eight here. Yeah, so there's, there's no second tiebreaker. So because we're up by eight in the middle and they're up by eight on the right, the game just goes to a full draw. Someone asked about the locations. Yeah, so yeah, so if we look here, 
Clin is currently the hot location, which means this one is appearing more frequently for this 24 hour period. So there's a, there's a pool that they come from and they'll typically be a hot location every other day. So you can kind of like deck build around whatever the hot location is. And again, no one drops in this deck, so I'm just passing. Clint flipped up again. The end of turn four, destroy all cards here controlled by the losing player. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and just domino left again into Clin. With Max with Maximus here, we're pretty likely to be able to win this. They quantify hot. I think they said 50 or 60% more likely to flip up. Collector is a tough one to beat in Clin if their their hand is good. So this says whenever a card enters your hand from anywhere except your deck, it gets plus two power. That being said, I'm currently ahead here. So one of the reasons why I like Maximus, despite this looking like a drawback, is there's a hand size cap of seven cards in this game so making my opponent draw up on their hand can actually fill it up so they can't generate stuff to make collector bigger so i think i think we maximus on the left here because it probably hurts their collector and we're gonna flip up first here okay that's a that's a devil dino so devil dino gets plus two for each uh each card in your hand which we just gave them some extra. So we're hoping to draw an Enchantress or a... We're hoping to draw an Enchantress or a, uh, a what's it called to be able to get past this. I don't want to play center here because this is going to destroy. We're almost assuredly going to be behind center. The question is, where do I want a Cosmo? I think I want a Cosmo into the Strange Academy here. Oh, it's not going to stop anything this turn is noteworthy because I don't have priority because their name is glowing. They're probably going to Moon Girl this turn. Oh, Jubilee. Interesting. This is a weird card to include in their deck. Oh, that's funny. They hit Moon Girl off of the Jubilee. Okay, so... Strange Academy is going to re relocate cards from there this turn. I think we probably just Vision because of the flexibility he provides into next turn. And then hopefully repositioning Vision plus Magneto will allow us to get a W next turn. Vision's like a bigger Nightcrawler. Yeah, kind of. He technically can move every turn, though. He can te technically can move every turn. But usually, if you don't if you don't play him till five, you only get one chance to move him. Okay, so we got... We hit Enchantress, who wipes off ongoing effects off of cards. So if we Enchantress here, she's going to take all the power off of Devil Dinosaur. And then I think we play Armor right... So that way, if they don't play here, we win here. Enchantress wipes Devil Dino, leaving them with seven, and we'll have 11 here, and we're currently winning left as well. So I'm going to snap here, which this does, this says to my opponent, I think I'm going to win here, and they've conceded. So the stat mechanic I haven't explained yet today. These are your ladder points you get for a match, and it starts off at one, and it naturally doubles on the last turn. And each player can choose to double it at any point over the course of the game. So, because I felt like I was going to win, I snapped. And my opponent said, okay, I think I've lost this. So they retreated only losing one. Whereas if they stay in and they lose, they lose four. There could honestly, and this is one of the things that, that's interesting about the snap dynamic. There, It's possible that I'm a yeah, it's possible that in this particular game, I'm ahead by enough that I'm not supposed to snap because they concede if I snap, but they probably stay in for one more cube. So the, the expected value proposition of snapping versus not is interesting based on how strong your position on board is. But 
But yeah, I think I think you're right, Steve. I think I actually stood to gain more there by not stepping. Now, this is currently in pseudo closed beta. It has an open release in the Philippines right now, but there's a bug in this current build where sometimes it pairs you into someone and then it goes to waiting for zero and then it, it bugs out. Happens. Happens once every handful of matches. Was there any card that punished our step there? I don't think so, which probably means I shouldn't do it. What does Maximus do? It lets your opponent draw two cards when it flips up. It's also a soft combo with Cosmo because Cosmo stops on reveal effects. What does pseudo open release means? It means if you live in the Philippines, it's it's technically released there, but it's not released anywhere else in the world. My opponent said hello, chat. <laughs> I feel like the appropriate response to hello is to chat snap on one. All right, they kicked some rocks into my deck. All right, let's go ahead and domino here, center. Sweet, and uh, Kunlun is actually great with vision because we can move him into there to get him to nine. I think we're gonna wave on the right over here. Okay, they moon girled. That means our... So this is the last turn to make plays here. So I got to decide, do I want to commit Jessica Jones to here or not? I think the answer is I don't. Because if I commit Jones to here and they play a devil dino out with moon girl, I'm not going to be able to Enchantress into here. So I think I just kind of accept that I'm punting. Clint here. I think I'm going to go ahead and Jones in. I'm going to Jones on the left because I want to vision next turn to be able to move him into here, I think, is the, is the sequence. Spider Woman. Okay. There's a Magneto. So because they didn't Devil Dino here, I also have the flexibility to slide vision into here. Oh, wait. These are three and four cost cards, chat. We could we could Magneto these two cards out of Klin into Xandar. Oh, I, I forgot to switch my... Update my title. Thank you. bad thank you apologies okay so i think we slide vision left and magneto mid right because magneto pulls three and four cost things into here so he might even win the left side and then vision's gonna go over to here and he'll be nine so we'll have 18 left and we're gonna have 16 mid oh they filled the center that's a little scary oh that doesn't really work out for us wait maybe does it does it? Oh yeah, because Deathlock kills these? <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> nice, Nova. Sweet. So now, now we win left and center. Sweet. Good stuff. Good beats. Yes. Yeah, ag agree. This is this is my favorite six drop in the game, too. How did, how did Deathlock appear? They played Deathlock from hand, but I had priority because my name was glowing going into it. So my Magneto flipped up before their Deathlock flipped up. Yeah, yeah, this this deck that I'm playing, so the, the Nova deck that that opponent was playing is the most popular deck in the game by a lot right now. I kind of expect it to be nerfed. Um, but our deck, our deck is like a 50-ish percent win rate against it. I've been playing off stream a bunch. Q &E. You're the best. You did. Thank you.
Oh, that's true, Techno. Yeah, even even if I go second, if Magneto would have pulled all their threes and fours mid, so I would have won right, right? I would have won right and left still. Uh, we do not have a release date for non-Philippines. I don't really want to make copies of Domino, I don't think. Well, I guess... I guess a copy of Domino might be fine, because my turn five play might be a three plus a two, actually. Yeah, let's do let's do that. And there's that hot location clan. Let's uh no, not storm. Let's wave over here so we can vision or magneto next turn, because she makes our cards cost four. Well, actually, if there are a deck full of cheaper things, maybe I want to wave middle so that way I could have the opportunity to wave again on five to slow them down. Yes, a storm floods a location, which makes next turn the last turn you can play cards there. So she she has good synergy with vision because vision can slide into a flooded location later if I accidentally lose it. So they have seven cards in hand, and they can only play one more. I think I'm going to vision left. Or vision right here. Because if I vision right, and they double dino, I could bail out of this location. And if they do something worse than vision, I can leave him in. Yeah, so Devil Devil Dino is kind of a combo with Moon Girl. Moon Girl double duplicates your hand, and Devil Dino gets two for every card in your hand. And unfortunately, cards can no longer be played here in Clint, so I can't I can't enchantress this Dino. So Vision Vision is going to be leaving. The question then becomes. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we're waving plus dominoing this turn to make it so there's only one play next turn for each player. Because they're, they're probably setting up the double Nova rip for next turn. We could also like set up Cosmo, but we don't know which lane they're going to play Nova's into. I can, I can wait to move him. Okay, there's Bucky into Carnage. Okay, now that's, that's, that's funny. And then Magneto, oh wow, wow, they're so dead, shit. <laughs> so now, now we're winning Clint because Magneto, this put a random card from each player's hand in there, so they got wrecked by their own carnage. And then our Magneto came in and cleaned these up. And then with Vision winning here, I and they can only play one card. I think we just Enchantress here to reset the Devil Dino. This, this might be one I'm not supposed to snap again just because of how far ahead we're going to be. All right, Jeff, I'm going to play the next game or two muted so I can chow my food real quick. 
Apologies. We're still gonna play, but I'm gonna stuff my face. Although now I, f I feel like just, there's just so many traits I feel like I need to talk. It's awful. I think I think I want to play left because of the potential Stark Tower payoff. It's close though. So I think I'm supposed to armor right here because I'm expecting them to be Nova Carnage because most people are and they don't want to Nova Carnage into Stark Tower and they're not going to be able to Nova Carnage into Clin later. I feel like I just punt Clin and like play here to Stark Tower. And then I can deploy... Oh, you know what? I Maybe I messed up here. So I chose to play Enchantress here for six instead of Shang-Chi just because she was one more power. But I can't Shang-Chi a Devil Dino on the right because my armor's symmetrical. So maybe I'm supposed to have Shang-Chi'd here so I could have Enchantress to win right against the Devil Dino later. So let's vision so he gets the plus two here, and then we can decide where to put him after. I think we're probably dead here. I can add I can add 10 power over here, but I think I think we probably lose. Yeah, it's, it's just got oh for one cube I'm gonna stay in. But I think we're probably probably done so. If there's a tie, the first tiebreaker is total power in play. Our opponent does not have Devil Dino. Deal. Deal. I'd have probably conceded to a bluff there, if I'm being honest with myself. What if I 
Storm left, and then Jessica Jones here next turn. I guess that I'm locked out of Clint, but I can probably win left and right and give up Clint, I think. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna punt Clint. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm just going to drop Jones on the left here, and that probably wins that location for us, especially if they they split between these. This was a good hedge on their part. All right, so I have six this turn. What do we think of Wave into Maximus here? I think that sets me up to be in a decent spot, right? And then next turn we can Enchantress plus armor or Shang-Chi plus armor, depending on what they do. Oh, I only get one card next turn because of Wade, but that's fine. I think that's still okay for us. I say also get to play a six drop here. We'll see. This is another where us going second sucks. So if they have Devil Dino, it's a 12 power thing here. Yeah, so I'm flipping first, which means I can't play Enchantress or Shang-Chi and get their effect here. So I think we just vision and hope that they have like Chavez and not Devil Dino. If they have Devil Dino, we lose the tiebreaker by one point because we'll be 17 to 17 and we'll be up three down four. Magneto relocates as many three and four cost cards on the opponent's board to his spot where he flips off. Really, really good disruptive element at your top end. actually don't know the order that Magneto pulls things in. Which is something I should probably figure out. I don't know if it's random or follows play order or what the dealio is. When there's more on board than it can than it has space to pull. Yeah, we've definitely hit the, the high end of Clint a few times here. I've seen it most games, but it's fine. I don't think this card's very bad. I think this this location is fine for this deck. So this location is actually kind of medium for our deck because we don't um, play a lot of cards out 
two single spots frequently. But we also have Storm to, like, wipe it off the board if we need to. So, I think that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and wave this turn to set up Magneto for next turn, potentially. Multiple. Multiple man's pretty good. All right, and there's Vision. Yeah, so I actually think one of one of the really fantastic things um, about this game is the fact that the decks get to be pretty consistent while the locations provide the bulk of the variance. It really makes it feel like your deck building choices are super meaningful while the game still have a variety of play patterns. What's going on, my dude? All right, so Vision can cheat into Clin. Cheating, cheating, cheating. But he actually cheating? You just said cheating. So, 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 is the other team cheating? I think they're cheating? I don't know. Maybe. If they're cheating, they should get banned from this game. They should be banned if they're cheating. That's a good, that's a good, good, good point. Yeah, back to person. Back to back. Back to good. So, this is going to move all things from here to other random locations at the end of turn five. I'm just going to play vision on the right. And then our turn six is probably going to be Storm get rid of Mojo World, so that way it doesn't have this plus 100 text, and then also play Cosmo. I, got a question, I think I'm going to go ahead and snap back here before they see Daddy, I have vision. Daddy, wait. What's up, wait, June? Back got 900. 900. This is 109, buddy. This is 109. If I actually end up in this game... Yeah, this one gives them plus 100 power, so they have 9 plus 100 more. So back... Oh, vulture, vulture hitting left is very bad for us. Hey, Daddy, can we talk? What? How do you doing? Can we talk? And also, also, can I have a You, you won't like these. You've tried them before. Daddy's playing for a little bit more, and we can hang out after I'm done streaming today. Yeah, okay, bud? Yeah, I could talk about shopping. Okay. So, if I put Vision here, and then I put Cosmo here, I'm only going to be at 10 power total. So, I think we actually have to bail. The fact that Vulture hit left was so unfortunate for us. I think they, I think they almost assuredly have uh, at least one big play to make here. And I have to Storm on the right, which means Cosmo is my only other meaningful play. That sucks. Vulture. Vulture hitting one of the two moves there. It's a bad beat. So, locations like this are a big part of why having a card like Storm in your deck is pretty important. I think with some asterisks, almost every deck wants to have a Storm, a Rhino, or a Scarlet Witch because those are the three cards that change a location in play. So I think having having access to a hey this location is now different goes a long way because there's a lot of a lot of locations that can flip up and based on your hand or your deck you're just like oh this is really bad for me so being able to have a let's wipe that off the map yes ma magic's actually probably one of the cards I want to open more than anything she's real sweet. Storm will flood that one. I 
This might be a play Enchantress out for just power and toughness. This is also the last turn we can play to both of these locations. On reveal effects will no longer happen in Xandar, okay. That's actually kind of nice for us. So we can both only play to the right here now. And Night Nightcrawler can slide over. So let's go ahead and drop. Jessica is nine power. These two together is eight. So I guess we do drop Jessica here. Depending on what they do, this might be a retreat game. All right, well, I was going to say if they have a Heimdall, we actually lose to tiebreakers because their Heimdall will be plus nine and these are plus eight. So we'll both have 17 here and then they're up five, we're up three, but sometimes, sometimes their hand is worse than yours, Jeff. Sometimes, sometimes their hand is worse than yours. To point out a small verbiage thing. Miniaturized Lad says cards can't be added here on turn three, four, and five. Added not only includes played, but it also includes things like Vision and Nightcrawler moving into them. This is different. This is different notably from the Klin location that's hot right now, which is flipped up a lot today, it says cards can't be played there after four. Losing priority here sucks. So because, because we lost priority here, they got to double their hand with Moon Girl, which is super unfortunate. I guess we, I guess we, Cos Cosmo's a card. Cosmo's a card that I'm not sure if I actually really like in this deck. I've gone back and forth on if I like this because it locking out my Enchantress and Shang-Chi feels really awkward. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and retreat. Cosmo. Cosmo is a card that I go back and forth and if I actually want to play. It's good against Nova, but otherwise awkward. a different three I really want to play. I've played I've played Kingpin in here. I'm not sure if I like him though. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Usually I'm, I I want threes I can play on curve, which is why I guess Storm is a three we don't usually play on curve either. So like having two threes I don't play on curve is awkward. Wave, Wave and Maximus both play on curve. Honestly, it could be right just to like play a death lock. I can also, you can also play Polaris as a card I thought of because she has some neat techie considerations. She's like a, like a mini Magneto. You could, you could just play her on three as like a five power thing. Like not as big as Maximus, but close second. It could be, it could be either of these. This can, this can also screw with the opponent's plan, which has value. Sorry, let's try some Polaris. I played a couple of games with her, but not a ton. Oh, I need to uh, re-screenshot the deck if we're going to change it. Uh, Mogwai, to your comment about Shang-Chi, yeah, it's a little bit of a tech card. Um, it's really good against, like, opposing Magneto decks and other decks that have good six drops. It's not, it's not great specifically into the Nova decks outside of killing Dino on occasion. Thanks for the follows, by the way. Appreciate folks coming in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Jeff Hoagland. I stream full-time here on Twitch for a number of years now. I do a lot of card games, notably uh, Magic the Gathering and now a bunch of Snap. I also play some other stuff like Pokemon Unite on occasion. Planning to do Snap for a couple hours to end my stream each afternoon here. So feel free to drop the channel, follow, and stop by again sometime. If you also enjoy pre-recorded stuff, I have a Snap-dedicated YouTube channel, Hoglandia Snap, where I post highlights, uh... Plan to post highlights three to four times a week. Cards cost one less. That's exciting. This is this location's really good for us because our deck's got a lot of beef in it. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and storm the TVA here. Just take that, take that off the board this turn. Bishop gains a power permanently every time they play a card. So, there could be merit to playing Enchantress just to fill the curve this turn. And the question is, where do I want to play her? I think I just want to play Enchantress left. And the plan will be we can Jessica Jones right next turn. And then on five, because of the Elysium, we can Vision plus Domino center. And then send Vision wherever we need him to be where we're behind. I think there, there's a chance that like... Storm plus Enchantress here, and then Jones here means we're winning all of them. Okay, look at Rhino and Storm fighting over locations, champ. Yes. All right, this is still ending this turn, though, so let's definitely Jessica Jones here to get 10 power in. She gets two bigger if we can't don't play a card there next turn, so she's excellent here on four. We're in a, I think we're in a pretty good spot to win here. With the uh, Magneto plus armor next turn. Sure, that's a blue Marvel who makes all their other cards plus one, but we're still like pretty far ahead here. So we're sol solidly winning right. Magneto means we're one up on the left and then armor means we're gonna be a uh, five up in the middle. So good, good chance we lose mid, but I'm pretty sure we're going to win left and right. If they like go like, what if they Nova Carnage? If they Nova Carnage here, the Carnage will be 10 and then I'll lose left, but win center and right. So yeah, that's, that's fine. Oh, also I have priority. So if they Nova Carnage here, armor, uh, armor stops them from blowing up. JK, LOL.
Leech is kind of a fun tech card. This is this is another card I've had in this deck off and on for disruption. On reveal, pull all the abilities off of cards in your opponent's hand. It's another another one that can kind of catch the Nova deck with its pants down on occasion. If the sequencing is good. How about we how about we change it up? Give me back. Ah, let's let's play a few more. Let's try and get a Polaris game in. Get some credits. Let's see how let's see how Polaris goes. I might just chill on this disruption deck all afternoon. This is the one I've been playing the most off stream that I've been enjoying. This is the location I mess up with perfect information more than any other. The old hand swap Rooney. What do we think of playing armor mid versus Enchantress? So Enchantress isn't likely to hit something and armor would lock them out of Nova Carnaging mid down the line. So I think there's value in that. Although, if I give them Enchantress, they could turn my Claw off later. Yeah, I'm going to play Enchantress just so they don't have it on the last turn, I think. So, this is going to go down power after they play stuff out. But they, they could have a Moon Girl here. The problem is if I play to the right for Shang-Chi, I'm not going to be able to Magneto on five and then we'll lose Magneto to the Mindscape. Oh, we are going to get their hand. Yeah, that's true. Huh. With getting their hand in mind, do we just like armor wave? So that way our hand is super small when we pass it back to them. I think that's the play, right? We just like armor wave with the plan to Magneto next turn. Sweet. And they even set up Nova, Nova here in the center where we've got armor to lock them down now. Okay. So we know that we're giving them, well, uh, super flow is giving me extra and wave. Um, I don't have any cards here. So if I Magneto here, we're potentially tying on the right. I probably just want a Magneto mid, huh? This will pull Devil Dino over, but it's also going to be kind of small. So I think that's fine. And then maybe we win with their hand on the right next turn. They snapped. So, so we're going to be giving them Shang-Chi, Claw, and Jessica Jones. JJ is a little scary next turn. Okay, so they have Polaris, Vision, Jessica Jones, and Shang-Chi. This devil dino animation is re is really obnoxious. Okay, so if they play 
any cards out of their hand, we win center, right? I guess they could they could claw on the left. Are we dead? I think we're dead, right? Because of claw left. Does Claw left kill us? Because it's going to put them to 25 in the middle. And it's going to put them to 7 here. Because I can't, I can't keep up here and, and elsewhere. Yeah, man, I think our Claw beats us and we got to concede. The fact, the fact that they maximus us before, before the hand swap was so brutal. If this was, if this was four smaller, we'd win. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta retreat. We're done to the claw. That's so unfortunate. Good, good tech card for that location for their deck for sure. Yeah, but if I if I dump two there, I, the claw means I lose left and center, Steve. Is that is the problem? I heard a suggestion that Devil Devil Dino. Oh, that wasn't their Maximus. It was our Maximus from their cable. Wow. Yeah, that's totally what it was too. Yeah, 100, 110 percent. It wasn't even their maximus. I forgot they played cable on two and drew a card off of our deck. I'm salty, champ. That's that's extra brutal. So it wasn't even a tech card. It was they RNG'd our card that was good against that location off of our deck. Second raid. Do I want to try and play into strong guy? I don't think so. I guess. Nah, I think I think we're just gonna end up punting Clint now. Oh, they played a second one into here, so I feel less bad about that. Okay. Trading trading Polaris for strong guy and bishop, I think, is fine. With Claw and Vision in my hand, I kind of like storming... I kind of like storming Wakanda. Although I guess I could storm the Tinkerer's Workshop. And then that sets me up to Vision into Magneto on 5-6. Yeah, I like, I like that actually. Wow, they're committing more left? Nah, but you can you can have that location. It's gone. You got it. Cause they can't Nova Carnage here. That's uh concerning. We might be torched shit. Yeah, I think we walk away, right? They have two cards left and they're probably one drops. So I can't even Magneto these over to here. And even if I could, it wouldn't really accomplish anything, right? This is this is definitely a moment where my opponent messed up by snapping. I might Magneto just to see the end for one extra cube, but they're probably winning. And I'm definitely not staying in for three extra. Peace.
And we're gonna play, well, let's do one last one with this, then we'll play some of the, uh, some of the movement deck for the last little bit of the stream, I think. We have a Killmonger. Uh, yes, that's the one that destroys all one drops, right? Some, some things are ever present among card games and people suggesting we play a card to kill all the one drops after we just lost to the Kazar deck is like peak card game Twitch. <laughs> yes, yes, you are correct. If we really wanted to beat Kazar, we could play the card to kill all of the one drops. That is a, that is a legal thing we could be doing. Oh, that one got ruined. Okay, so... I think we're still just like Jessica jones -ing. Well, I guess, do I Jessica Jones middle now to make them fight for this location? Because I can like claw left next turn. And then on turn six, we could deploy some power. I think I, think I want to just Jones here. She'll add 10 center giving us a total of 13 and then claw will put us to 18 mid so we'll have to commit more here while we're still adding power left and right so this isn't just over yet because they can slide the two out and commit something else here that has more Hey, what's going on, Frosty? GG. That was a good beat for sure. So... If we Polaris here... We could Maximus here and then probably win mid and potentially left. And she could also pull Yondu potentially over to here as well, letting Wave win right. I don't actually think Killmonger's that good. I guess it would be okay in a spot like this, but... Oh, White Tiger adding another is pretty good. This is not going to work out for us, right? Negative. Oh, I should have been thinking about Odin when they had White Tiger on, on five. All right. Let's, uh, let's swap over to the slide deck. I, st I stopped playing this deck because I was tired of getting torched by Nova decks, but we haven't actually played against that much Nova today. He says before he loads up with it and then cues into nothing but Nova. Thanks for the follows, folks. Good to see people hanging out for some Marvel Snap. Game's been a ton of fun. I've been playing it a bunch off stream. Played a little bit on stream every day, too. Excited to see where this one goes. Feels like it has a lot of potential. So this is a deck that uh, really doesn't like Central Park because cluttering up all of the locations with squirrels feels bad for it. Um, it's based around using cards like Multiple Man that get bonuses when they move around. We use cards like Cloak to reposition our stuff as well as things like Heimdall. So I think because I have Cloak here, because I have Cloak here, I think, God, this location is just awful for us too. I'm just going to retreat. In addition to Nova being a little annoying, 
Um, I think this, I've played this deck a bunch. I think this deck gets hit by uh, tile space RNG, location RNG, harder than any other deck I've played in the game. There's a few, there's a few tiles that like add stuff to the board or like lock you out of playing extra things. And this one is definitely a little bit rough into those. Like space, space thrown and things that make stuff are real bad for us. Things like, things like Clin aren't really bad because we can slide things around. In fact, we have Iron Fist into Multiple Man here. So this moves the next card we play one location to the left. So we're going to go ahead and drop him here into Clin. And then we'll play Multiple Man on the right here, which will cause him to slide Multiply next turn. Heimdall, Heimdall is the slide in our electric slide. He moves everything over to the left when he comes into play. Oh, one extra energy. Well, I can torch and multiple man now. This doubles its power every time it moves. I think I'd rather move multiple man than move human torch to start. And I'm going to start human torch in the tinkerer's workshop because this way if we draw a... Uh, Oh, what's his name? A cloak. We can move him to the right. <laughs> Rough beat. All right. Um, <laughs> location variance. Chat location variance. It doesn't really matter who I move here because Heimdall's just gonna move the other one later. And I guess we'll vulture, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter. We're, pro we're probably gonna win this game despite it because we're in the Sanctatorium here. Oh, they're at 15 here now. That's probably fine. And I guess I just don't play anything this turn because I'm Heimdelling next turn, right? Oh gosh, Vision lets them win the Sanctatorium now? Okay, now we're torched. Can't you move it to the right? No. Nope. Heimdell moves everything to the left. Oh no, I... I wonder if this archetype is strong enough based on how much you get hosed by the locations. I'm trying to get this one one more shake, but if we if we get hosed by locations for a third time in a row, I'm going to pivot to playing something else. Are the card acquisitions in a completely random order? Kind of. So there are pools of cards where all of the cards you get for a given level range come from a specific grouping of cards. If you Google Marvel Snap Card Pools, you'll find links on the internet that show which cards are in which pool. You meant men the turn before you decided to make space. No, the Sanctatorium says cards can't be played there, which is, again, talking about that uh, location variance. So I'm gonna cloak. <laughs> All right, I was say I'm gonna cloak middle to pull Human Torch mid, and then Doctor Strange will pull these people out into Clin before Murder World gets them. But apparently it was a free cube kind of game. They should change some of the move cards to let you pick the direction. Yeah, I assume them forcing you to play in a specific direction is related to um, them wanting the interface to be clean and move quickly. 
They could just change some of them to always be to the right or always be to the left instead of all of them always being to the left, basically. So, Forge is a card that's pretty good with multiple men. So is Hulkbuster. So, multiple men copies even modifications that are on him, and Forge gives it plus two attack. So, I think this is going to be like a Forge into multiple men into Hulkbuster kind of game. Get our, get our multiple men nice and big. The way Iron Fist interacts with Hulkbuster and multiple men is actually profitable for us. So Iron Fist says, move the next card you play one location to the left after it reveals. And the way this works is Hulkbuster merges with the card at the location you play it at. So if I Iron Fist here and then Hulkbuster here, Hulkbuster merges and then slides, and I get extra nine power multiple men here in Mojo World. Our opponent snapped. It's a little aggressive. I don't know that I'm feeling strong enough to snap back, but definitely feeling pretty okay here. We probably win right if we pull two nine power multiple men into here, right? So I'd have uh, 15, 23 over here. Their Punisher will be worth six and this will be worth four, but that's only 10, 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we go cloak here and then we rhino mid. I guess I could armor mid just for the, just for the sake of it. Just to, like make sure they can't do anything silly. It's the same amount of power. Let's do, let's do that. I'm gonna snap too. I think we're winning. Well, I want them to see, I want them to commit to the snap before they see I'm moving multiple men over. So multiple men goes here, multiple men goes here. They snap back into these locations. We Heimdall in the mid. So I'm going to have 23 and I'm going to have uh, 13, 22 and I'll have nine over here still. So Heimdall, Heimdall doesn't even actually slide anything here. He's just like an eight power six drop. Wow, we beat Onslaught too. It's actually kind of impressive. Doubles, doubles your ongoing effects at his location. They came, they came close over here thanks to doubling up Kazar, but no cigar. They actually came close here as well, huh? Because they doubled Kazar and Mr. Fantastic into both of these. Solid eight cube takedown. Can see why they stayed in. All right, I'm glad. I'm glad we got to go. This deck, this deck is the my favorite to play when it pops off. It's just not super consistent. When you when you really get to go with multiple men, though, it goes. So, I don't have a two drop to play next turn. So I think I think we just Iron Fist. I'm going to Iron Fist on the right because of Heimdall considerations for later. So now I have to decide, do I want to multiple men into the right and slide it? Or do I want to save 
the movement from Iron Fist for Vulture. The upside to multiple menning is I'll get to Doctor Strange multiple men next turn as well. Let's do this. Do you think everybody using the same deck is a result of a TCG without factions or colors? No, that happens in TCGs with factions and colors too. Whenever, whenever a single deck is dominating a format, the answer to why this is happening is always the same. Poor balance. Uh, Doctor Strange, I believe, pulls all your cards if there's a tie. So I think we actually want to Vulture here, and then we'll Strange over here, pulling multiple men in this over. Well, this is zero power, so Strange does not move this one. I also think I'm probably losing Clint to the Collector, so I think we just Vulture here for now. They snap. They're also likely playing the Nova deck though, so there's like there's a good chance we just can't win because they're playing the Nova deck. Speaking speaking of everybody playing the same deck, how do you play Snap on PC? Utilizing um, you play Snap on PC utilizing uh blue stacks. Okay, so now if I Rhino here, we could pull we could pull this one over too. Although I don't know how it would pick between all three, four drops because it, it can't move all of them. Okay, I think I'm just going to strange here like this because they're probably going to play a Devil Dino here and I want to be able to Enchantress their Devil Dino here later. All right, so we've lost Clint. They've, they've super committed to Clint. Time to, time to bounce out, my friends. Let's armor plus Nova mid to make it so they can't uh, Nova Carnage in the center here. Human Torch is actually a great drop because I want to Enchantress left to turn off the Devil Dinosaur and I don't mind having another thing to pad a little bit of stats here in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and snap them and uh, let's go. And they have like a Cosmo as a tech card we can get in trouble, but usually their deck doesn't play Cosmo. Yeah, yeah, Human Torch means we beat Chavez Center is great. Get fucked. Devil, Devil Dino and Nova are the two, the two best interactive cards you can play in this game right now are Armor and Enchantress because Devil Dino and Nova are the two best things you can be doing. Which is another way of letting you know that we only play trash decks on this stream because you'll note that I'm not playing Devil Dino or Nova at any of them. <laughs> for people for people that are new, we're typically a garbage decks channel in every card game that we play. <laughs> yeah, Wave Wave and Cosmo are other other good tech cards as well, for sure. I played a little bit of the discard deck. You check out my uh, Snap YouTube channel here, Hoglandia Snap. There's a discard deck highlight along with a half a dozen other, other sweet and interesting things up there. Human Torch. Draw two is not bad. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. A little awkwardness, so I, I want to forge the multiple man, but I also really kind of want to iron fist the multiple man. I think the result is I'd rather just iron fist. Okay. 
And then with Heimdall in hand, we probably want to uh, multiple man, right? Oh. Oh. Scarlet, Scarlet's got our back, Chip. Oh, I guess playing Enchantress here means I can't Doctor Strange. I, I think that's fine. Because we, ha we have the Strange Academy to relocate things. I'm going to snap before they see I'm, I'm taking their Devil Dino. They do, they do have a single Novo, which is a little scary, but I think that's fine. We'll get to, we'll get to forge into Vulture left next turn. I think I actually want to forge my Heimdall next turn, so that way um, I can choose to put 10 power somewhere. I think is the plan. His nipples are electric. Nipple, the source of his power, Chant, the nipples and the belly button. So he's all charged up. Okay, their stuff gets a little bit big here. Chat, I guess you could say Nova gets all charged up when he sees multiple men. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> All right, I think Heimdall middle probably means we win. As we pull, we pull a bunch of people out of Stark Tower here, and then I think we win left and center pretty handily. Because these, these three are gonna slide to here, and Vulture's gonna be a 13. So we're gonna have 13 Oh, wait, Vulture actually does... No, he does, right? Yeah, because these, th these three go. So this will be 13, uh, 16, 19, 23 left. And then multiple men will stay here. All right, let's, let's, let's let it work it out. Oh, oh, we might lose to an Iron Man. I think we're going to be a little bit short on Iron Man. Yeah, it's on Fort. This is this is a card that these decks just started playing. To let them really go up over the top. Yeah. I like I like this deck, and sometimes you get them, but on on average, I mostly stop playing this deck off stream because it's uh it's really bad to Nova Carnage. You basically basically never win. <laughs> I try. I ought to do one more, but I think we're probably going to switch back to the Disruption deck for the last leg of it. Dara's usually playing some other sweet things, so maybe they're not Nova Carnaging us. What? <laughs> well, that's an uh, unfortunate beat. Is like lost two cards immediately. Ah, I take a do over and give him the cube. Just have, have no payoffs and our hand is empty. Yeah, a, little, a 
little RNGs is there. I don't know. I, one, of the, one of the reasons I actually really like this game is someone who plays a lot of card games. Hey, I'm not. Thanks for the 21 months. I really appreciate you keeping me around. Welcome back. Oh, let me fix that. This should be over the other one. Give me a minute. One of, one of the reasons I actually have found I really like this game is because even games like that where sometimes you get hosed by variants, you get hosed by variants in every card game at some point, and having a variance thing like that happen in a three-minute game is so much less of a feel-bad than, like, losing a game of Magic 45 minutes in because I drew another land. Like, all, all of the variance is just infinitely more tolerable when the game is a shorter segment of my life. Wow, well this is actually a great location for us. I'm gonna I'm gonna snap with Iron Fist and the multiple man here. It was like 30 seconds tops. You've been talking to my wife. Uh this game is currently in closed beta. Oh, oh, that didn't count as, as us playing a card. Well, that's great for us. Okay, so let's multiple man here and then he'll slide on in. All right, chat, things are gonna get a little weird. Huh. I'm gonna sentinel right here because it lets me reserve the option to Rhino TVA in case I want more than four turns. I think I'm losing if the game ends this turn, right? They're gonna play something for at least four power to the Savage Lands. I don't I don't know if we can win in six, but I think I think we lose this turn. Does a play simultaneously? Yes, you both choose where to deploy your cards at the same time. And then the winner is, uh, and then the cards flip up at the same time. Okay, so, well, chat, now my, now my stream title is a lie. <laughs> I said there's no Nova Carnage decks here, but in my defense, they're making me play my opponent's deck. Actually, let's Nova Carnage on the on the left so that way I can Heimdall and slide the torch over I already snapped right yeah okay. I think we just Heimdall right. We, we honestly have a shot to win all three lanes here. Yeah, they conceded. God bless. Taste it, Nova. <laughs> all right. See, this deck can beat Nova Carnage. You just have to flip Weird World and draw it for them. The key, this is secretly a Weird World deck, Chat. You give the Nova Carnage deck your bad movement cards, and then they lose to you having their Nova Carnage. There are literally upsides and downsides to both having priority and not having priority. Against the Nova Carnage deck specifically, 
not having priority tends to be beneficial. Let's human torch to the left since we have cloak to pull it to the right. Yes, you want your armor to flip before their carnage, but you want your enchantress to flip after their devil dinosaur. It's a great how priority plays into the current metagame summary, for sure. So, Human Torch doubles its power every time it moves. Which means when we attach this Hulk Buster to it, it's going to be a 6, which will double to a 12 when, uh, when Cloak pulls some stuff around. It is a Sunday stream. So I'm going to be off Tuesday and Wednesday this week because I'm doing some stuff with the family. So I wanted to, wanted to sign on today and get some, get some content hours in. We'll still have pre-recorded stuff up on the YouTube channels. In fact, I think I'm going to post a Snap video on Tuesday and Wednesday, just like I post a Unite video every day. So, Clint says we can't play cards here after turn four. So, I need to decide... Do I want Human Torch to end up... If I, if I Doctor Strange here, we almost assuredly win Clint, right? The question is, can we win other locations still? I guess Heimdall might mean, might even mean we don't do that, right? We might end up pulling him out. We'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Strange the Torch into here. Yeah, Rogue's, Rogue's definitely a neat card. Are rocks just dead cards? Yeah, basically. Subterrain, subterrain, put a bunch of rocks into my deck. Uh, cards taking up space is not free. I'm going to Rhino plus Forge here. Well, actually, do we just cloak? What if I, what if I cloak? It's just because cloak's just more power, right? This is four for two. This is three for two. And then we'll Heimdall left, which will slide these over to here along with Heimdall. So I'll have... Uh, 14, 22 power here, and then Strange and Torch will end up center for 26. Time for the electric slide, Chip. <laughs> Sounds good, Great Bear. Have a good flight. Can I move torches with cloaked ability twice? No, because the these cards, the when when Heimdall slides things, he goes one, two, three. So the moving the torch sooner or later is the same result. These these three Dorkos are gonna end up here in Nova Roma. And then Strange and Torch are gonna end up in the runes regardless. Yes, the rocks basically exist to eat a drop. There are, there are some cards that have synergy with rocks. 
In fact, at some point, one of the decks I want to build, um, I might actually be closest to building it. Uh, where is she? Um, Viper here says, on reveal, your opponent gains control of one of your cards at this location. So like building a deck with like Viper and Derby. I really, I really need the one drop. Derby makes, gives players rocks. I really want the, the one drop that makes a demon before we try to build the Viper deck, I think. These things, things I think about while waiting to acquire more cards. All right, they didn't hit my vulture. That's great. And I, honestly, Doctor Strange getting hit doesn't really matter because, um... Oh, well, that's perfect because I, I was going to play him after vulture anyways. Probably punting Clint here. We'll see what the third location is, though. Okay, Cloak's actually kind of funny. So I can Doctor Strange the Vulture over to Subterrania. Subterrania. And then next turn, we can Cloak into Clin to pull Vulture over to here as an 18 power unit. So we're probably going to win Clin with a huge Vulture now. If Arena has taught me anything, it's that you can throw, you can beat things by linking your PayPal account. So you actually just can't you can't pay to simply progress in this game you can accelerate your progression by paying but you're obligated to play a bunch to actually progress your account it's an it's an interesting system so i think at this point i've mostly used up all the benefit elysium can provide so i think i'm actually just gonna rhino it here Hi, uh, Heimdall's a great last stretch, yep. So he'll slide these two over to here, and then these three will come mid, and this will double up to four, so we'll have 18 mid this year. Easy snap. So, Human Torch and Bishop are not ongoing effects. They don't have a name, but they're basically triggered abilities. And triggered abilities and ongoing effects are different in this game. So ongoing is just a static, this is always happening. Things like Torch and Bishop happen one time at specific, inter or happen each time a specific condition is met. So they're different, diff fundamentally different than ongoing. I don't think they're beating 18 in the middle. Okay, sweet. <laughs> okay, so you know how I said I don't think they're beating 18 in the middle? If this had been a moon girl instead of a sentinel, they actually would have beaten us, right? No, wait, is that is that true? Maybe it's not. No, their hand wouldn't have been enough, right? This would only be 14. No, I'm wrong. It would have been 14, 17. Yes, multiple men is another. This happens when a specific specific trigger is met. All right, chat. I think I like to go out on a high note. And since it's a weekend, I'm going to go ahead and pop off a little bit early. 
I'm planning to be live for my normal stream day tomorrow as well. And then I'll be off Tuesday, Wednesday, and back Thursday, Friday again. I'm planning to do hour and a half, two, two and a half hours of uh, Marvel Snap at the end of every stream this week. If you want more Snap content from me, I actually had a deck highlight video that's brand new posted on the Hoaglandia Snap channel this morning. Really appreciate everybody that watches that stuff there. I'm getting close to the amount of watch time so I can monetize that channel so it can make me a few bucks every month. So if you want lots of good Snap content from me that's edited and curated, be sure to check that out. Also be sure to stop by again here on Twitch later on for some more great live Snap. Enjoy the rest of your Sundays wherever you're at in the world. Hopefully get some of you around again soon.